All right, it's time for Ask Junior. And of course, we got a ton of questions on social media in regards to the Ty Gibbs, Ross Chastain thing, but we already covered that with Steve Latart. So we've got some other questions that were submitted via social media. All right, let's get to it. Um, Ask Junior is one of our favorite parts of the show where we get to uh, talk to the fans and, and, and the fans send in some great questions to Xfinity Racing on Twitter. It's been good all year to have their support, Mike. Twitter, you know, Xfinity's been uh, a massive part of of the industry in many, many ways, supporting obviously the Xfinity series, but they do a lot more than that for for NASCAR, and their involvement is 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 really critical, actually. Um, but they're really very supportive of us, of us and what we do here at Dirty Mo Media, so uh, we want to say thanks to them. Um, in case we don't get it in in the final couple episodes, we want to make sure they know we appreciate them for everything they've done for us all year. But let's get right to these questions. My first question is for me. What's your over-under on actually making uh, paper balls into your paper basket down here? He just threw it. I yeah. don't know if he, I can't I don't know if he, he got it either. No, that, there's no basket. Oh, you just threw it. <laughs> oh, he just threw it at There's Dustin. usually a basket. Okay, yeah. anyways. I'm not, I'm not, I've not hit the basket much. <laughs> <laughs> so this one comes from J.L. Armin Armandaras. It says, Dale, should owners have more say in NASCAR? It seems like a lot of times NASCAR makes a decision and then owners are just forced to play along. Is the, is the person asking me if owners should have more say? Yeah. Well, yeah. they are. They have the RTA. Yeah. Um, you know, I basically the balance of power, in my opinion, is probably the networks at the top, NASCAR, and then owners, dr- drivers, somewhere near the bottom. Um, that's you know the, the 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 teams gain some leverage and power by com, you know coming together and forming the RTA, which is the Race Team Alliance. Um, they gain the ability and the leverage to f- ask NASCAR to form a charter system, so that now they have true value in their in their teams. If you wanted to sell a race team before the charter system. You all you had to sell was the assets, the physical assets, the building, and the parts and pieces which you were going to sell pennies on the dollar. Now you have a charter that's uh, this invisible, uh, non tangible thing that's worth thirteen to thirty million dollars, depending on who you ask. You know that's created a lot of power and leverage for the teams. They they kind of control the drivers in a sense. So uh, you know where NASCAR doesn't have quite as much leverage on the drivers. Uh, and ask, uh, the teams sort of have have that in their pocket as well, but still they don't wield quite as much power, I think, as NASCAR. And I don't I don't know that I need the teams to have more power or equal power to NASCAR. You want you want the organization, the body, to be the ruler, uh, the one making the final decisions, the final say. You want them to have the power to to make decisions and set rules and and be able to move on, right? And I think as as uh, power equals, uh, process slows down, decisions slow down, um, things don't get figured out, and choices don't get made to allow us to move forward. Uh, when when there's absolute power and leadership by NASCAR, and specifically when there's absolute power and leadership by one individual in NASCAR, that's when things, in my opinion, have been the best. That person was going to tell you how it was going to go. And so, you know, if there was a dispute or a disagreement, that person could come in and settle the score and set things straight with a comment, and that was the end of the discussion. Things are better when you got somebody in the room that can say, this is what we're doing, all right? End of the story. Um, and that's the way I think it needs to stay. All righty, this next one comes from Joey. It says, Dale, will you go trick-or-treating tonight? If so, do you make a costume that conceals your identity so you don't get recognized? I don't care uh, about that. I, 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 um, I think that um, I probably did that when I was much, much younger, wearing masks or whatever uh, to make it to where I wasn't so uh, recognizable. Yes, I might have did that around 2004, but at this particular time in my life, it's all about making sure that uh, our little kids and all the kids in the group have a great time. They feel like that the parents are into it. Um, and so I will dress up. Amy has a plan. <laughs> and 
I will. Uh, I've got my costume ready to rock. We'll be Amy will be sharing that on her social media and all that. And uh, my focus mainly is to make sure I'm I'm there for the pictures and making sure that our girls have a safe experience and that they see us engaged in what they're doing, um, walking up to the door. Uh, talking them through the experience, you know, we got a two-year-old, and she needs, she's going to be going, wondering what we're doing, what's hat, why are we at this house? I don't recognize this house. Who's this person? What are they offering this bowl of candy? What's, you know, uh, so you just got to be there in the moment, sort of spelling out how this is happening and trick or treat and all that good stuff. Now, Isla, her sister, will be helping along with that, but um, I like to watch them uh, smile, laugh. Uh, Talk to the talk to the homeowner and whatnot. So I like to be all in it. Are the girls at the age where they like to pick their own Halloween costumes? No. So so, so it's a family themed mm. costume. So yes, this will be this year's family themed. Uh, that's up to Amy whether they can pick their own or not. <laughs> and when that happens, I'm sure Isla is, is almost at that point to where she's going to be like, "No, Mom, I really want to be this," and Amy's going to let her. But for whatever reason, this year, Amy had a plan that we're all in this, you know, in this theme. All right. This next one comes from Sophia. It says, you mentioned on the broadcast that you and Truex rode together to Martinsville. Who drove and how would you rate Truex as a road trip buddy? Uh, I drove. Truex is going hunting, so he wanted to drop his car off the airport. So I picked him up the airport and drove him. I was his car service to an extent. <laughs> I drove him to the, uh, to the racetrack and dropped him off. Uh, we, we chit chatted a little bit, you know, small talk early on, but most, uh, you know, Truex is quiet. So it's all, I make it a competition of who can be the quietest, um, <laughs> if I can out quiet Truex. Right. And so you ride along until he becomes so uncomfortable. He finally says something, uh, which only happened once or twice in a span of about an hour and 20 minutes. I know you at your peak and him at his peak. That's a heck of a grudge match right there yeah. on who can be the quietest. Yeah. Cause I think both of you can bring something to the table there. <laughs> I, years in years past, man, when I would ride around with Truex, I was in my mind rummaging through the filing cabinet of things to talk about, <laughs> and you know, I like, believe it. Yeah, you know what I mean. You got somebody sitting there not talking, don't talk, and so you're trying to, th- hey, man, uh, how's how's the Eagles doing this year? <laughs> um, you know, and you're just kind of thinking of things to say, things you don't care one don't bit about. <laughs> no, but you're just trying to get this damn guy to open up a little bit, come out of his shell, stop being so damn moody. But uh, on this trip, or maybe I've just gotten to the age where I'm like, all right, you you sucker, I'm gonna try to out quiet you, and and make it so damn uncomfortable that you got to be rummaging through the file cabinet. Thinking of things to talk about. <laughs> it's, it's so true. I could hear it, yeah. man. Oh, the cringe. I know, right? <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> that's so cringy. That is. Do you leave it silent or do you put music on when he's not talking? Yeah, like, and then what kind of yeah. music? Like, what do yeah, you I like? I play what I want. <laughs> I'm driving. Driver driver gets to pick, yeah. <laughs> I play what I want. I played at uh, Pop Punk and all that stuff, Danger Summer. He's going to like it. <laughs> he's not going to say anything. If he, if, he, <laughs> if he don't like it, he's got to speak up. He's going to have to talk. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. We've got a couple more here. This one is in regards to our good friend Parker Kligerman finally securing a full-time Xfinity ride, 48 next year, for Big Machine, and how exciting that is for both a, a teammate but also to see the grind that he's had to go through. You know, for a team like that that's – on the cusp of really breaking through and trying to get better, hiring a, a young, inexperienced guy probably isn't the best thing. But I really thought Parker uh, was the most sensible choice uh, to help that team get to that next level. Parker can come in there with his understanding and ability and, and his knowledge and history and help them understand where they're weak, help them get their cars better, Parker always drives cars above their their real potential. There's only a few guys uh, that, that can really actually take a car and get a little more out of it than the car is capable of. And uh, he's a great road course racer, which they run many road courses in the summer. And so he races great on the super speedways, has a truck win at, at Talladega, I believe. And so anyhow, he's a... 
He's a great all-around talent that, for whatever reason, hasn't really gotten the break that would get him through. If Scott in the 48 car can invest in Parker, I believe that that's going to pay off big time. If they would give Parker two solid years, they won't want to let him go. At the end of that second year, they're going to want him to stay. It's going to take some time, and it's going to, it might happen overnight. It might take a little while, but they'll get better. And eventually, they'll be in victory lane, and Parker will be the, car, uh, the driver of the car when that happens. Um, all right, last question here. Um, and we had a couple people actually kind of submit this question on Twitter. It says, Dale, what was your reaction to the video of what appears to be Austin Hill punching oh, Myatt Snyder oh. after the Xfinity race on Saturday? He straight clocked him. Yeah. So um, I, 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 saw, I saw the first video of them picking Myatt up. And I'm going to tell you, knowing, having been through concussions, having watched enough boxing matches, having experienced um, all of those things, I absolutely could tell that. Myatt didn't look like he had his legs about him when he first initially got up off the ground. He was kind of – he looked a little shocked about what might have just happened to him. Of course, at this point, at this point, I don't know that he's been punched. I'm just looking at this look on his face, and he had rubber legs. No question. So we move on through the next 24 hours, come to the racetrack on Sunday, and our tape room has some uh, video of the punch. We go and watch it. I was floored by the um, the um, veracity of it. Yeah. And I, you know, I, that I was impressed, you know, by the, by the physicality of it and the punch itself. I mean, it's a hell of a punch, hell of a throw. Apparently, Austin Hill works out a little bit, does some MMA, MMA, MMA fighting on, during the week just, just to, as a training tool. Uh, knows how to fight. Knows how to throw a punch. He knows how to throw a punch. <laughs> yeah. Don't, all right, so check this. Write this in the notes. We don't mess with Austin Hill. <laughs> <laughs> right. I knew that just I started on the size re- alone. I, I started know. replaying his interview in my head where Austin Hill says, hey, I told him to walk away twice. So in his in his post race interview, they go, "What was the deal with Mike Snyder?" He said, "Well, he came down here to, to to run his mouth, and I told him twice he he needs to leave." He didn't leave, and he didn't leave, and then he said something I didn't like, hmm. and so I made a few phone calls, <laughs> and apparently, um, what Mike said was was nothing more than, you know, you think you're a big shot because you race for RCRs, no, some. You know, some sort of, you know, normal smack yeah. talk. Right. Nothing personal, nothing about his family or anything that would really warrant the reaction we saw. Right. I bet you can't throw a punch. You know, he didn't say nothing like that, debate that, right? He just well, said, yeah. So, gathering the hearsay, I don't have facts. I don't know. I don't know what's true and what ain't. I don't know. I wasn't standing there. I ain't got a recording of the conversation. But gathering all the hearsay, and the video, uh, I would say that if you go down to another man's car, no, you better, if you go down to another man's car, go into victory lane, go into another person's garage, truck, hauler, whatever, mm-hmm. whatever happens is partly your responsibility. You're putting yourself in that situation. All right. And I know that Myatt probably isn't going to, press charges or, uh, you know, Myatt's going to, you know, accept whatever the outcome is, I would assume. But Myatt carries a little responsibility for putting himself in that situation. But Austin, I feel like, will more than likely get some sort of penalty or, a, or, or some sort of suspension because it's assault, it's too much, we can't have guys swinging hard on each other like that. What if he had knocked Myatt out and Myatt hits his head on the ass on the concrete? Then what kind of problem we got? Yeah. We yeah. got a real issue there. Yeah. You're going to jail. That's going to be cops. Yeah. That's going to be a, a massive problem that's going to be out of NASCAR's hands. Mm-hmm. So, in to save, I guess, Austin Hill from himself, NASCAR is going to step in, make sure that he gets the message that he can't do that. 
It's, if you can't do it on pit road, you won't knock somebody's block off. You may might as well try to see if you can convince them to leave the property. <laughs> right, All right. Right. Now, if you still want it that bad, get him to get you down at the gas station or something. Right. The Applebee's. <laughs> the Applebee's. Right. Who was that? Mike that Harman. was Mike Harmon. Mike Harman. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> but on pit road, in the garage, it can't happen. As impressive as it was. God, it was a monster hit, boy. It can't happen. Holy and man. so, you know, I don't want to hear all the <laughs> complaining when NASCAR does something to Austin Hill. Because that's, it's warranted. That's coming. Yeah. Yeah. But I will say, ain't nobody going to mess with Austin Hill no more. No. <laughs> nope. Boy, he threw a punch. And he didn't hesitate to throw it. Knocked him out of the frame. And then jumped on top of him. Yeah. That's true. I, yeah. That's right. You I remember that, that used that. to be like a TRD thing. Like I remember for a while, TRD had like all of their like development guys yeah. in like MMA for motor skills and that kind of stuff. And I yeah. think Austin's just like stuck with it and does all the MMA stuff. I remember when, uh, you know, uh, Noah and Burton were swinging on each other. Yeah, because Burton was doing the MMA yeah. stuff too. Both, yeah. both of them went into like training in case it escalated. They wanted to be ready. Burton was Austin Hill's sparring partner, he told me. Okay. And that seemed scary for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said it was crazy. Yeah. That's you know. fight or flight, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. He's like Iowa farm big. I mean, like he's country he's big. strong. Yeah, country yeah. strong. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Cool. Well, you know, I, I think I might have, ought to have been a little smarter than to go down there and, and try to have that conversation. But, uh, you know, Austin Hill has a – very bright future. He won't really probably serve any repercussions in his camp. RCR probably um, probably is impressed as we are by that little activity there. Um, <laughs> From know, the top down, yeah. they're impressed, right? They're, yeah, they're, that's that's, <laughs> that's right in their wheelhouse. Is to go, you know, just to might as well whoop their whoop somebody's ass <laughs> rather than have a conversation. But um, you know, so I can I can I can see him. Feeling maybe a little uh, – I can see him being well-supported on his end of the deal, but I think that they ought, that he certainly hopefully needs to try to check it a little bit next time. Gosh, you know, uh, maybe just punch him and not, not, you know, not jump on top of him. But, I don't, you know, maybe, and maybe don't use all the force, right? I mean, you're, you're almost 25% larger than the man you're hitting. Um, either way. I, I was curious. Marty was there, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I like as a parent. I, I thought about this as a parent. What do you do in that situation? I know there's already like conflict of in, not conflict of interest, but you know you got to be professional on your job. But you also got your kid out there racing. I know Jeff Burton has to deal with this. You do from an ownership standpoint. Like that's always there. But what what about when your kid gets absolutely clocked? Like how do you manage that and stay professional? That is. That is what I wonder. That would have been really hard. Um, you know, you want to go over there and, you know, pick your own fight with Austin Hill, I imagine, but you can't do that, right? You can't have that. Look at your dad fighting your fights for you. Marty removed himself from the conversation during the pre-race show when uh, and Dale Jarrett and Kyle Petty took over the pit box in that moment and – brought us back from commercial, teed up the conversation. We all talked about it. All that was without Marty. Mm. And, uh, you know, he requested that, or that was good, in, you know, good foresight on NBC's part to do that. But um, I don't know what you do. What do you do as a parent? Like, when, I think forward, about these things. I watch my daughter yeah. play soccer, and they get very physical out there. I, yeah. I watch it, and, and I've asked myself, like, you know, what happens when, when, when somebody throws a punch? Yeah. Um, I, I've seen it happen. And you go, go to YouTube. You can find this all the time. You know, it, kids, Little League games or, you know, soccer, you know, two girls just absolutely, you know, pulling hair and going after it. Like, what am I going to do if that ever happens to my daughter? It I is need to a figure that very, out. It's a very – man, it's a problematic, difficult thing to even yeah. play out in your head because it's like, you know – and that's what I thought about when – what does Marty do? Forget what does he do in the moment. Marty's not going to go there and pick a fight with Austin Hill. He's not. No. That's not the kind of guys. But just to have to watch your kid. What's he going to do? With deal Maya? with this type of life incident. Yeah. What is he going to do to help my? Um, yeah. Understand how to how to move forward. 
with confidence because you know right. your kids are gonna listen your kids are going to have struggles they're gonna have trials they're gonna have confrontations some of them may be physical and you got to let them learn and live and become better people of it and I'm sure that's I think easier the, said than done this plays <laughs> out in this this plays out in a big spotlight and can have an effect long term on that person or that individual something being so public you know, Marty's going to have to interview uh, Austin Hill, you know, at some point Yikes. down the road. Mm. Think about that. Hopefully this weekend, man. That'd be awesome. <laughs> so, Austin. Yeah. I mean, without that even coming up, it's in their head. Man. God, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. That's it. We're That's good. It. Yeah. 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 Yep. All right, everybody watching this on our YouTube page, make sure you click that subscribe button now. Um, before we hit the road, we want to make sure we say thank you again to Xfinity, uh, their proud premier partner of NASCAR. They are a great supporter of Dirty Mo Media and everything we do here at the Dale Jr. Downloads. So thank you, Xfinity. We'll see you next week.